sins. Come on, make it personal. Say, I surrender. Come on, somebody sing it. Sing it. I Some of you don't even know what you're saying yes to, but you have to say it. Some of you have been running from God, but this is the moment. I say We're not running from him. I surrender. We're running to him. Come on, say it. I say yes. Not running from the call anymore. Not content to sit on the sidelines anymore. You know God's spoken to you. He's given you a dream. He's given you a purpose. You must say yes. You must say yes, Lord. Come on, this has to be a cry. This has to be a cry. Say, I surrender. I'm not running anymore, but I say yes. I surrender. I surrender. With all the nothing. Giving you my all and all. I surrender. I surrender. Praise the Lord. How many is ready to have some church here tonight? Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet right now. Let's lift our hands unto the Lord because he's going to meet with us tonight. He's going to touch us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to give us what we need. And I don't know about you, I'm not going to go home hungry. I'm not going to go home empty-handed. I'm going to get what I need tonight. So let's raise those hands. Raise our voices to the Lord as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you and thank you for your grace. It's so sufficient. We thank you, Lord, that you're meeting with us in this house tonight, right now. I thank you, God, you're giving us release. You're giving us deliverance. You're giving us peace. You're giving us victory. You're giving us miracles. You're going to touch us with your word. You're going to instruct us, God, by your hand. And we thank you, God, that you're meeting with us on this place tonight. Thank you, God, that every devil in hell is going to shake because you're moving in the hearts of these men and women in this house. Thank you, God, that you're breaking down walls and barriers. You're, you're setting us free and you're delivering us into a place, God, of total victory. We've been lacking, but God, you're giving us total victory right now. Thank you, Lord, for moving every obstacle in this place and giving us complete liberty. We love you for who you are and what you're doing. Bless every part of this service, God, and we give you all praise right now in Jesus' name. Can we praise him? Come on, let's praise him. Lift our voice. Hallelujah. We will stand and rejoice as one people lift to one voice. You're worthy of the way, worthy of the name, worthy of the name. And we will shout and proclaim the 
to him say Just give me, 
in this place tonight looking for any other thing other than Jesus because if you look for him you're going to find him if you look for brother Lord you'll find brother Lord if you look for me you'll find me you'll find us I'm looking for Jesus how many says Lord I want to see you manifest yourself reveal yourself to us because I tell you tonight Anybody that's operating in gifts understand this one thing very clearly. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. How many says, but through Christ, we can do all things. Somebody say all things. Amen. Before we do the, or before we take the offering up to the man of God, we're going to pray. We kind of do this backwards. It's kind of like going to the restaurant, paying for your meal before you get it. You don't know what you're going to get. Trust me. It's going to be good. Amen. Now, sometimes we... Anybody ever been to a real good steakhouse? You know what I'm talking about? I found out today these places that you go to, you only get the meat. You don't get nothing else with it. And I'm like, you kidding me? Where's the rest of it? Oh, you got to pay for that extra. I don't go to them places very often. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, y'all way out of my league. I want, I want it all when I, when I get it, when I order. Amen. I'm not telling you got to pay for anything. What I'm telling you is God's going to bless you. Amen. As you give. And you give us unto the Lord tonight. Amen. You ask God, what is it, God, you want me to sow into this ministry? Because I promise you this ministry is about to sow into your life. Amen. Lord, we come before you because we, we want to see you bless this night in a supernatural way. We want to see you pour out your spirit, God, upon everybody in this house. We want to see your word go forth. 
and lives be changed by the power of the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray tonight, God, that we go beyond our understanding, God, and we bless this man of God that has come tonight to bless us. Lord, we just give you praise right now, God, for just pouring into him like he's going to pour into us. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can text to give uh, tonight. Uh, I don't know where that is on the screen, but there is a number you can text to give. Also, you can if you write a check, write it out to New Life Christian Fellowship. We'll take care of that. Amen. You can give on PayPal also. Would you give us unto the Lord? Amen. Would you give us unto the Lord right now? Amen. I said sing. Didn't say sing. Amen. I, I still got some country sang in me. Amen. Hey, thank you, Pastor Craig. Let's give Pastor Craig a great round of applause. I love Pastor Craig and Pastor Angel. Just beautiful people. Always the same. Love their faith. Love their attitude. Uh, just Pam and I are privileged to, privileged to be here. Honey, you want to come up and speak to them? Come on up, Pamela, Sister Pamela. Yeah, from Mississippi. She's from Mississippi. He always, she's always got something really good to share because I have to hear it every day. <laughs> well, we've been married a long time, fixing to be 40 years, so... And even after 40 years, I never know what to expect with him. I never know when he's going to call me up here. He just does it spur of the moment, but that's okay. And I like what I feel in here. It's such a sweet, sweet spirit of the presence of the Lord. And I can't think of anywhere I would rather be on a Monday night. Is that how you feel? Thank you so much for inviting us. And um, it's going to be a special two nights. I'll share something very quickly um, that the Lord shared with me, for me, but maybe it'll be for somebody here too. Um, last year, I had dealt with a lot of infections in my body. In a period of actually about 18 months, I had 16 different, and well, they were the same infections that I just kept getting over and over. I would go on antibiotics and feel better and get off in about three days. After being off antibiotics, I would get sick again. And a couple times got very sick. I did pretty good through the summer months. In the fall, I started getting sick again. And then through Thanksgiving, I was on antibiotics for four weeks and was still very sick. So the doctor did some more tests. He said, you have two different infections, and we're going to put you on two different antibiotics for two more weeks. So Christmas Day, I finished six weeks of antibiotics. And thank you, Lord, I'm feeling good. But he wanted me to go for blood work and stuff. I had a physical not even a month ago. And... Um, so I thought, you know what, January, I'm going to start the year out doing Whole30. Y'all know what Whole30 is? It's where for 30 days you just eat whole foods, not processed, no junk, because I thought, I need, I need this. And so I created a shopping list, and, um, and then before I even started it, I thought, no, what I really need is a fast. And I knew for spiritual reasons that's a good thing, too, but I hate to say I was really doing it for physical reasons because I thought I've been on so much medication and ate so bad during the holidays, I'm going to do a fast. And so I started a water fast, and I think it was my second day, maybe third day, and in my devotion time I was reading the Bible in Matthew 4 where Jesus was in the wilderness, and he was on a fast, and he was hungry. And I was hungry. <laughs> 
And so I could relate. But he had been on a 40-day fast. And we know that scripture is very familiar where the Satan came and he said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. And I was thinking, man, I love bread. And that sounds really good right about now. And, um, but Jesus, and you think about it, that was like a twofold temptation because he wasn't only tempting to his hunger, but it was tempting him to prove who he was, which Jesus never needed to do, right? And so Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And so that really struck me, and I've read that scripture many times, but it really struck me because I felt the Lord say, you are out of balance. You, we never really think about our health until we're sick. And then when we're sick, that's all we think about. And it had all of my attention. That's all I could think about was getting better in my physical body. And I got to thinking about that, how much time we give to that. You wake up in the morning, and you look in the mirror, and what do you have to do? You have to fix your hair, you have to wash your face, brush your teeth. Then you're thinking, what am I going to wear today? What am I going to eat today? And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of consumes us sometimes, how we look, how we feel. But we're more than body. We are body, soul, and spirit. So what if we gave that kind of attention to our spirit man? how powerful that would be. My husband and McGee talked about being waterlogged with the Holy Spirit. And so when you think about that, um, I was thinking about an illustration my husband gives, and I'm going to try to hurry, about how God stands outside of time. And he, he would give an illustration of a book, and he would hold a book. And so the Bible says our days are numbered. This flesh, this day, our days are numbered. We are aging every day. And so if my days are 10,000, and I've lived more than half of my days, and we opened a book, then I would be, have lived more than half of that book. And so I cannot do anything about my past. I am stuck in this time, in this moment, right now. I cannot go in the past. I don't have a time capsule. I cannot go in the future. But the good news is, is that's only my flesh. But my spirit, when I unite with God and our spirits become one, he stands outside of time because he is like the author or the reader. He can turn any page. He can go to my last page. He can go to my first page. He stands outside of time. And when you think about that, that's why they call prophets seers. Because when they get in the spirit, they're not bound to time. They can see in the past. They can see in the future. One of my favorite miracles, and this is last I'm going to share, because it has to do with God standing outside of time. He did many miracles in the Bible. He raised the dead. But when he raised Lazarus from the dead, when he went there, what did Mary and Martha say? Lord, you should have been here. Now, how many times do we say that? Because we know that tonight miracles are going to take place. And we're already thinking of people that should have been here. But see, the good news is that when we get in the spirit, we can go out. We're no longer confined to space and time. And we can speak to people the word of healing outside of this building. Amen. And so Jesus said to Martha, Lazarus will rise again. And he, she said, Lord, I know he's going to rise again on that resurrection. So that showed that she really didn't know who he was. She knew that he was a prophet and she knew that he did miracles, but she didn't realize that the, he was God manifested in the flesh and that he stood outside of time because he said, I am the resurrection. In other words, Lazarus resurrection day is today. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I get excited when I think about stuff like that. And before he sings, my husband actually wrote a song. I don't think he's singing it tonight called Come Alive in Me. Holy Spirit of the living God, come alive in me. And it's on a, a live CD that he did in Charlotte. And we have this for a gift. It's a gift. We just want you to pick it up. You can pick one up for yourself or a friend. And then we have an older CD that we brought called Ashens in the Rain. And it's got a song that him and my brother-in-law wrote called Here's My Heart and a bunch of other good songs on there. And we just wanted to bless you tonight. So pick one up for yourself and one for a friend. And God bless y'all. Thank you. Amen. Can y'all hear me good out there all right? Okay. Well, kind of feels nostalgic here being back in Mississippi. So if y'all can hear this piano, Pastor Greg, that's all right, sounds all right. 
So this is the first song I ever wrote, and I think you'll remember this. long time since I sung it, but I just feel like back home. I started on this journey Not seeking wealth or fame The only thing I want in life Is to bear His hope Had my share of problems and trials along the way. But when the mountain looks too high, this is how I pray. I want to be a man after God's own.
Well, that's exciting. Be a man after God's own heart. Make sure you pick up the CD that, Pam, this is our gift to you. We love giving, and, and uh, so we want you to make sure you have that. This is, uh, this, this is really nice. Kayla is up there playing the piano and singing, and I remember prophesying over her. Yeah. I don't know. She was just a, she was just a young one. But the size of one of her kids, I think, right? And look what God did. So I'm proud of you. Very proud of you. And uh, great to be with uh, Pastor Craig and Angel and the great church here. Uh, and our great friend who we were with last week, Pastor Gary Wayne and his wife, Nicole, are with us. And... Uh, I was thinking, I, I, I called you Tracy last week. Is that crazy? I don't, uh, wasn't a prophet there, was I? <laughs> uh, but uh, just, and, and like I said, Brother uh, uh, Bailey, I want to talk to you for a few moments here tonight. And uh, I asked the Lord what he wanted me to share with you, and this is definitely what he wants me to share with you. Because... Think about it. Jesus said, where the twos and threes are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Okay? And, uh, uh, you know, prophets confirm they don't confuse. Right? And uh, I have no problem to say I missed it and all that because it just, because there's, you know, in this kind of a ministry, there's, there's a lot of jellyfish, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, but there's, there's something I want to share with you that the Lord revealed to me, and uh, it kind of really sparked my thinking prophetically, and it sparked uh, my attitude towards praying, uh, I mean, when you think about the prayer of faith, right? Can I just talk to you tonight? Yes, and then we'll just worship a little bit and see what the Lord does. If he wants to speak, he can speak through us. Uh, but I'm excited about being here tonight and tomorrow because I really feel, Pastor Craig, God is going to speak in the atmosphere and through the atmosphere yeah, and for the atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So... Uh, I, the prayer of faith, we, we, we hear that expression, and I believe in it. The prayer of faith, the Bible says, shall uh, heal the sick. So the prayer of faith works. But I think in our, in our world, I think sometimes uh, we, uh, we feel like we have to have some sort of an uh, emotional performance sometimes to, for God to hear us, Right? And I just don't believe that's really true. Boy, you guys, am I looking, seeing double here? What's up with this? You guys are twins, aren't you? Sisters. Uh, should have been twins. Man, I've never seen sisters look more alike. <laughs> I'm just making myself at home. Uh, so, so we have this. But the Bible says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. The prayer of faith. Okay? And then, and then we go on this journey because we want prayers answered. Right? We want, I want prayers answered. Absolutely. Right? So, I've tried about everything. You know, I've tried praying like a Baptist and then praying like Oral Roberts. You know, and I've even used the old voice expressions like them. If that, if that will work, I'll do it. <laughs> but then I just started reading the Bible, and, and uh, I kind of got a revelation. And it comes from Jesus when he said, he said, when you pray, believe that you receive while you pray. Simple. That makes perfect sense. When you pray, Believe that you re or that you are receiving while you pray. Amen. 
And then he said this. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. That's powerful. It doesn't now. Think about that. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. Put a stopwatch on that. That doesn't take very long. <laughs> so to me, the prayer of faith is asking, and, and, and here's, here's the other thing. Be, be aware of this. Ask from that verse in the Hebrew doesn't mean the normal asking, you know, Lord, please do this. It actually is interpreted demanding. Demanding. Yes. Just like, you know, kind of picture yourself fulfilling that scripture. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. Hallelujah. Yes. He's here tonight. I just wish some of you people back there would move up closer so I could see you here. Yeah, yeah that's up to you, though. <laughs> My Lord, way over here in the nosebleed section over there. Yeah, I think we got somebody way back there. And Okay, I'm having fun. Uh, but, uh, so where was I? I forgot where I was. Mm. Uh, demanding. Demanding. Oh, yeah, so just kind of picture yourself. Remember when he said in Matthew, he said, uh, uh, you know, look to that mountain. Look at that mountain and command it to remove, and it will remove. So I kind of, I kind of, kind of get that emotional tone going on. When, he, when I realize he says, ask anything in my name, and the actually he means demand it. Demand it to be done. I'm just looking over here. It's kind of awesome to kind of feeling yourself going into the Holy Spirit realm because I see like people that God is going to heal tonight and touch. And that's what kind of gets me a little sidetracked sometimes. But it's exciting to be in the prophetic realm and just see what God is going to do. Because, you, you know, you can't plan this up. You can't make it up. You just have to walk in it and give yourself to God. But there is a, one of the most uh, powerful chapters in the Bible is in the book of Luke. And I'd like to take about 20 minutes to share, the, share this with you. Because it is, to me, it's one of the most incredible revelations on praying and not believe him when you pray. Asking for something or demanding for something. And when the answer comes, you don't even believe it. And so I'm going to show you something from the book of Luke that's really going to challenge us. And I hope it does. Because it will make us a lot better. And it will absolutely change our thinking when we pray. Okay? It's actually found in the first chapter of Luke. And the main character is named Zacharias. All right? So... When you read that first chapter of Luke, you will, you will get the little bio on Zacharias because he actually explains Zacharias was a priest in the temple. All right? So, go back. Let's go back to the actual setting in real time of that chapter of what's taken place. Okay? So... You can follow along in, in Luke 1, or you can listen to me because I've about got it memorized. I've read it and studied it and prayed about it so many times. Like I say, it has revolutionized my prayer life and my thinking. Okay? This goal is going to be a great faith builder tonight. So, here's the setting in real time now from Luke 1. Zacharias... 
is in the temple doing his duty as a priest. It's his turn to burn incense. And that's what he's doing. He's burning incense, right? Well, this is going to be a monumental day. Because while he's burning incense, the Bible says in Luke 1 that an angel appeared to him. And the angel gives him a message. And guess what the message is? It's about a prayer that Zacharias had been praying. So this angel is about to prophesy to Zacharias about the prayer he had been praying. And actually, you can read where, where you get the feeling that when Zacharias was pray, was burning incense and all of a sudden he had to take a double, maybe a triple take because there's an angel standing, hovering, hovering in midair. And the angel's talking to him. Do you know the first thing the angel said to him? You know what it was? Be not afraid, Zacharias. So Zacharias must have been real startled and afraid, right? I, you and I probably would be too, right? <laughs> uh, although I've had angels appear to, to me. Uh, and I've never, don't know, ever remember being afraid. It was like a peace. But Zacharias was afraid because he said, do not be afraid, Zacharias. What the next line says, because your prayer has been heard. Wow. Can you imagine getting that kind of a message from heaven? And then that same angel begins to prophesy what his prayer was. He's going to actually prophesy about the exact same thing that Zacharias had asked God to do. Y'all ready for this? Here he goes. He said, don't be afraid, Zacharias, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to bear you a son. <laughs> so that right there, that lets me know, and you know, that what he, what he had been praying about. He has been praying for his wife to have a son or a baby. And so the angel is just sent from heaven, and now he's prophesying about his prayer. He said, your wife Elizabeth is going to bear you a son, and he's going to be great. And he begins to prophesy the kind of anointing, the kind of a personality, the gifts he would even have in his life. He said he's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. Oh, he's going, to, he's going to do mighty, mighty works for the kingdom of God. And he even told him his name. He said, you're going to call him John. <laughs> and when the angel got through, got finished prophesying about his prayer you would think that the next verse would say something like, and Zacharias fell out in the Holy Ghost. You would think that the next verse, by rights, it should say, and Zacharias was uh, in a trance for two weeks after that. Because I don't know about you, but to have a word from God like that, I mean, have an angel come to you and prophesy? That should give an incredible response. <laughs> but it didn't. Because after, Zach, after that angel got finished prophesying to Zacharias, Zacharias, you know what his response was? How will I know this? How is this going to 
happen. Well, there it is. Verse 18, Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man. <laughs> and my wife was well stricken in years. See, as, as she holds that verse right up there, or he does, or maybe an angel's putting it up there. Who knows? <laughs> but I want you to look at that verse. And I want to tell you something right now in the name of Jesus. If you ain't going to believe for the answer to your prayer, quit praying. You're wasting your time. See, that's the issue. That's a problem with a lot of us. We're just praying out of rituals. We're just praying out of habits. We're praying because that's the way we were raised. Mama made us pray. Daddy made us pray. Pastor told us we got to pray. We got to pray. We got to pray. So a lot of this praying is simply playing. Because we're not believing anything good is going to come out of it anyway. <laughs> right? And that's a prime example right there. The man was a, was a priest, and he had been praying because he wanted a baby. And he even got greedy. I want a son. You see, here's what's happening. The power of life and death is in your tongue. The power of blessing and cursing is in your tongue. Whatever you speak goes to the atmosphere. And the moment you open up your mouth and begin to speak, God hears. In fact, God said, I hear you before you even speak. But he loves to hear your voice. He loves to hear your requests. But a lot of times, we don't even believe God is hearing us. And we fast and we pray and we fast and we pray, but nothing happens because we really don't believe. <laughs> and there's a prime example right there. How am I going to know this? I'm old and she's old. This ain't going to happen. So I've got some things that I can say to Zacharias that really relate to us too. Because every person in this room is praying for something. Every person in this room is, is asking for something. Every one of us. You're believing for some sort of a gift or miracle or blessing or a healing to come your way. Nobody is not praying about anything. We all are. Every one of us. Because every one of us has a need. And we need a breakthrough. We need a blessing. We need a miracle. And so we're doing, we're doing the right thing. We're praying. But I've got something I want to say. And I want to say it to Zacharias. I want to say it to all of us. Because when that man gave that response, how is this going to happen? I'm too old. She's too old. This ain't going to happen. Well, then why did you even ask God to do it in the first place? If you're not going to believe, quit your praying. Now, I'm getting solid down here, right? If you're not going to believe, you're wasting your lungs. You're wasting breath in your lungs if you're not going to believe. And then the other question is, Zacharias, why would you even ask that, pray that kind of a prayer if you didn't think you could get a miracle. Well, that's, that's the issue. Because Jesus said you should believe while you pray. And that's a real issue with people that pray. They spend so, many so much minutes and hours repeating words that their faith isn't activated along with that journey of the words. They're not believing while they're praying. They're just repeating, repeating, and asking, and asking. The moment you ask, he hears. That's what the Scripture says. Okay? This is so powerful. So he's doubting the answer to his own prayer. Now, he, okay, so when you follow along the next verse sequences, here's what happens. The angel 
didn't give up. The angel starts coaxing him. Come on, man, believe. And the angel, look, he said, the angel answering said, I'm Gabriel. Does that, does that ring a bell, Gabriel? Gabriel's, I mean, he's the warring angel. Gabriel, that's the angel that's going to blow the trumpet at Jesus Christ's return. God just didn't pick any angel to go there and prophesy to uh, uh, Zacharias. I don't know. He sent the top rank. So he would be recognized by his name. I'm Gabriel, Zacharias, and I stand in the presence of God. Wow. And I was sent here to prophesy these glad tidings to you. In other words, stop your doubting. Start believing. Stir yourself right now. Don't blow this miracle. Next verse says, and behold, <laughs> you will be dumb <laughs> or mute. You're, you're not going to be able to speak. Look at this, because this is a revelation. You're not going to be able to speak until the day these things take place. Now, see, so let me give you another life lesson here of Christianity. We've always heard it said, well, God, God can't work through unbelief. Well, conditions, yes. God can work through anything if he chooses. So if God's number one choice is to work through us, yeah, right? He wants to work with you and through you. That's why he wants you to pray to him. But he wants you to believe that you're receiving while you pray. Because he wants you to feel the joy in partnering with him to, to see the execution of the prayer that you have prayed him for. Amen? He wants you to, to learn from it and grow your faith from it. He doesn't, oh, he wants you to go on that journey with him. But he doesn't need you. His first desire is to have to work with your faith. That's why, that's why Zacharias was, was working on. That's, I mean, excuse me. That's why the angel was working on Zacharias. He's saying, come on, man. You started this thing. You asked for it. You prayed about it. I mean, God just did not randomly pick Gabriel and say, hey, we're going to surprise the heck out of old Zacharias. He hadn't been thinking about a baby. He hasn't been asking for a baby. We're just going to zoom and just zap him with this unexpected prophecy. Tell him that he's going to have a baby. No, that's not the way it was. He started the wheels turning. He asked for this miracle. He prayed for this miracle. And that's why i got to reiterate again. If you're not going to believe it when it comes to you, don't pray about it. Don't ask for it. Because God takes your prayer seriously. He thinks you're serious when you ask him for a financial breakthrough. He believes you're serious when you ask him to save all of your family members. He doesn't think you're playing around. He thinks you really want him to work a miracle. So when, so when the answer comes, don't be like Zacharias. Oh, God, you're going to save all of my family? Do you realize how long he's been in prison? Do you realize how many times he's been in prison? Do you realize how much of a drug addict this guy really, really is? So we start doubting the answer to our own prayers. God, you're going to pay my house off? How in the world is that going to happen, God? It's not for you to know. Right. And so Zacharias <laughs> couldn't get anywhere. I mean, the angel couldn't get anywhere with him. He, you know, he, 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 he 
pumped him. He primed him. Come on, man. I'm an, I'm an angel. Look, my feet aren't even touching the ground. You want me to spin? Look, I'll do tricks for you. I'll fly around this whole temple if you want me to. I just want you to wake up and realize you're having a divine encounter because you asked for it, and God sent me here to tell you that he's heard your prayer, and your prayer is going to be answered. Amen? Amen. But he still didn't get it. Now, God could have tapped the angel on the shoulder and said, oh, come back to heaven. I can't work through unbelief. But see, like I told you five minutes ago, it, God wants to work through you. If, you. if you pray for something, brother, if you ask God for something, he wants to partner with you. Right? But... If you doubt, God, no, God doesn't need you. He can still do it. He can still do it for you. And I'm going to pr prove it. Because Zacharias did not believe. Now, we, we've always been taught, well, God, it's not going to happen then. Oh, no, no, that's not true. Because, see, God's got another dimension and that's when it's God and God alone. It's his sovereign dimension. It's when he doesn't need you. He does it in spite of you. You see, there are so many prayers that we've had answered that we prayed, but we really didn't believe. But God just kind of had pity on us. And God healed us in spite of ourselves. God answered in spite of our doubt and unbelief and our wavering in faith. Amen, somebody? Amen? And that's exactly what God's, God's going to go into his sovereign realm where he doesn't need you. Because the next verse says, you be dumb. I have to, I have to, I have to make you mute. Why? Well, because you... You already let me know what's in your heart. Unbelief and doubt. And if, if I'd, I'm going to give you this miracle. I'm going to give your wife this miracle. She's going to have a baby. It's going to be a boy, just like I said. But I can't take a chance on you warring against her mind. So you're going to be mute, Zacharias, until the day that baby's born. So nine months, Zacharias was mute, wasn't able to speak. He must have had to learn a little bit of sign language, right? Because that's the only way he could communicate. Can you imagine? How do you think he would feel when his wife started to show? And then to realize that he started that ball rolling? Because he was the one that prayed to God and asked for it to happen. But he, he can't even express himself now. Because he can't talk. Why can't he talk? Because God had to make him mute so he wouldn't interfere anymore. For nine months, he wasn't able to speak. And then on the ninth month, that baby was born. And all the family on both sides were there. And when that baby was born, Zacharias' mother, grandma, spoke up because a little bit of chatter about what are we going to name him? What are we going to call him? Oh, I'm not. I'm telling you, this is what Scripture says. What are we going to call him? And Zacharias' mother, his sister, oh, they, they spoke up and said, well, I think we should call him Zacharias. I think we should call him Zacharias the first or Zacharias Jr. We need Zacharias' name carried on. He's a priest. And just when they was about to almost take a vote to call him Zacharias, Zacharias wasn't able to speak and he remembered the word of the Lord. The angel said he will be called John. 
And Zacharias had nine months to learn a lot of lessons about prayer and faith and obedience. Nine months he could talk to himself, talk to God. And when they was voting on calling him Zacharias, he, he made a motion. And he looked at me and he said, give me something to write on. So they go and scrounge around. They, they find something for Zacharias to write on. Probably a piece of calf skin. And a quill. And Zacharias, the scripture says, Zacharias wrote, call him John. Dad has spoken. Call him John. And the scripture says, and Zacharias' tongue was loosed. And he grabbed that baby in his arms, the Bible says, and he began to prophesy over that baby. He went from a doubting prayer, man of prayer, to a mighty father and prophet. He didn't need any more lessons. He had nine months to repent, nine months to get his faith right, nine months to learn the principles of obedience and believing when you say, and I'm telling you, he made up his mind. I'll never doubt the prayers of faith that I pray again. This is the greatest moment of my life. This is the greatest trial and the greatest blessing of my life. I can prophesy to this baby now. Is that powerful? That is so powerful. So, let me quit now. And let me just go over with you as... Uh, Kayla, can you come to the music, please? Whoever else comes, whoever else wants to come, however you do it. But I know that I have spoken a word that is the right hour and the right time word. Do you know, do you know that when Jesus, when he would pray for people, the Bible says he saw their faith? Mm -hmm. He saw their faith. Do you know that you can see people's faith? Hello? You can see their faith. In other words, when I go to pray for people, I can see their faith. What do you mean? What does that mean? It, 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 faith has a look. Faith has a look. You can, it has a look. It has a countenance. It has an expression. I know nine times out of ten, while no matter who God tells me to pray, pray for, I know nine times out of ten whether they're going to be healed or not. How do you know, Lord? Because I can see their faith. And I can see their doubt. I can see their fear. He saw their faith. He saw their faith. When Pam and I drove up here today, man, what a beautiful area. And I remember being with Pastor Gary last weekend. And I just, I had just such a strong feeling about what God was going to do in the atmosphere. And that's, that's really that's really what God has anointed me to do. I can go into cities, and I've done it so many times, gone into cities and into churches, but the prophetic is not locked in, in these walls, you know? And I have been used, and I say this humbly, but I've been used so many times to, to just speak to atmospheres and God would just show me things that he was going to do and uh, wow hallelujah it's 
See, I believe in God. I believe He's with me. I believe He's in me. And I believe when I talk to Him, He listens to me. Here's another thing I believe in God about. I believe God wants to bless me more than I want to be blessed. I believe God loves me more than I could ever love myself. Amen. I believe God wants to bless me more than I want to be blessed. And I want to be blessed. But I believe He wants me blessed even more. See, I believe God wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. I believe He wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. I believe He wants to work out and answer your prayers more than you want your prayers answered. <laughs> I believe God wants revival for this whole region more than, more than every angel in heaven wants. Amen? Wow. And so He can send a prophet like me Because I love, I've been a pastor for many years, and I love pastors. Pam and I love pastors. That's our heart. Because pastors clock in and they never clock out. <laughs> They're on duty 24-7. And I was praying yesterday for Pastor Craig and Angel and this church, kind of just prepare my mind uh, for this meeting tonight and tomorrow. And I just felt the Lord just beginning to speak and said, you're going to prophesy to Pastor Craig about concerning this church and, and you're going to prophesy breakthroughs. And the Lord said, I will confirm it with mighty signs following. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet, everybody. Let's just get ready to go to the throne room here in the next few moments. It's just us here. And this is so important for you to understand. you got to understand this type of a prophetic anointing. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be nervous. Don't be afraid of me. I'm on your side. We're family. <laughs> I used to, when I first started preaching, I used to sit in the platform like a little Pentecostal preacher. I weighed about 95 pounds. And I'd stand up there and thought I was Superman. Me in the past, we'd be sitting trying to intimidate the crowd, just looking them over. Come on, you remember those days. And then God saved me and said, Son, you got to fall in love with me and fall in love with people. That's not what it's about. <laughs> now, if you get tired of standing, you can sit. It won't bother me. It won't bother me. Hallelujah. What I'd like to do here right now is I'd like to invite every person to come and join me at the front because if God's got a word for you, you'll be close from proximity for me and I'll be able to see you. Okay? Thank you. That's a bit beautiful. Because tonight and tomorrow night, I believe that God is going to speak to atmospheres. I really do believe that. I believe God is going to move and... Pam and I just got a text this past Sunday. Uh... 